I want to go ahead and flush the wow. rear master cylinder and the whole brake line out. So we're going to have to hook up on this. It probably has original stuff in it. We want to put something, something good and new in there. Here, take a look inside. Now you can see why I want to change it. That's as dark as a cup of coffee. We've got some brake fluid already in a bottle. And a hose of the proper size. And let's go ahead and break this loose here first. And get our tube on there. Go ahead and try to get that immersed down in the bottom. Find a bottle that doesn't want to tip over. That would be good. Okay, so now you got to pump this old stuff out of here. Okay, that does it. Okay, maybe that'll help. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, drain this reservoir down pretty low. Okay, so that's empty. Doesn't look too bad in there. Now it's just a matter of flushing it through until it runs clean. Gotta fill it up again. starting to get a little more clear. Okay, I think that's looking good. My level's right. Okay, that's it for you guys right now. rides here. Well, you can laugh and giggle all you want. Uh, I'm going to have to take the carburetor off again. I put gas in it and the carburetor leaks really bad. It leaks out the overflow tube completely. It's not dribbling out of there. It's blowing through it. So, Something's wrong with the needle in the float. I gotta pull the carburetor. It's really pretty easy to do on this bike, but I still don't like doing it.
probably some gas in it. So yeah, the gas was pouring out the overflow tube at full capacity. It, the gas was just running through there right out of the pet cock. And it also was coming out this overflow tube that normally goes over the top of the shock. So that means it was filling up the carb big time. So anyway, I'm having to take it apart this way because there's gas in the float bowl. No, it's as empty as can be. I took the float bowl off, I forgot. Okay, so there's your splash guard for the needle main. And I didn't even clean this. I could try cleaning this a little bit. But let's find out what goes on here. I mean, it's as if this wasn't operating or something. Looks like the float level is a little bit off. Well, let's go ahead and pull this apart. I don't see anything drastically wrong with the needle valve, but uh, it could use a new one. It doesn't look perfect. It's my it's microscopic, so it's hard to tell. What about the float itself? Has this been bent before? There's nothing in it. Okay, what about down inside the uh, seat here? What's going on in the seat? Well, you know, it looks okay. I'm not really seeing a gouge in it or anything. I can see a piece of debris in there. Just one little piece. You know, so I'm assuming this carburetor has had periods where it sat around with old gas in it. If it's overflowing, it's the float needle. So I took a toothpick and created a little skewer here that I can rotate inside the needle valve and make sure that the brass seat doesn't have an impurity in it. Well, even though the needle valve the rubber tip needle valve didn't look so bad. You know, I don't want to be pulling the carburetor out, so we'll put in a new one. I believe it's supposed to be level here, and it looks like it's too high. Okay, here's some other float off of something. I can't remember what. And that looks about the same. It's got a slightly raised end here. If you look at that, it's certainly higher at the front than it is in the back, but not by much. Okay, let's try one more used float, just to see where that's at. They all look the same. They're all pretty much the same. I don't think that the float needs adjustment, so I'm just gonna put the float that goes with this new carburetor back in it and roll with it as it is. Now I'm going to adjust it. Ever so slightly. Okay, now what do we got? Ooh, I like that better. So what was wrong with the old tip, if anything? There is a little spring-loaded thing here. which feels good. I'm gonna clean out inside the float bowl, hang on. Okay there, that's looking a little better. It just had a film and a few specks.
Well, I think that's about it for the carburetor. But I'm not putting it back on the bike without testing it this time. May as well, you know, hook up a setup here where I can get a static test on the holding fuel. So that's next. But first, when I was testing it before, I noticed that the petcock was leaking on the gas tank. So I need to replace that. Let's do that next. So the petcock's easy to change out. You just have to undo two, two bolts here. There's certainly some crap down on it. But it was leaking right out of the out of the joint here. Honda ones are riveted. And if you look at the repair kits that are available out there, they have screws. So what you have to do is carefully drill these out of here and leave room for the screws. I think they're self-tapping screws. I haven't seen them in person, but I hope they are. Otherwise, you got to buy a tap the right size. So you can rebuild them. You know, I've got four uh, that I could rebuild. But instead, it's cheaper to just buy an aftermarket one. This, this is one here that was uh, $1.50 cheaper than a kit. Okay, so you've got your kit, the main bulk of it here, consists of the strainer, goes up inside your tank, the petcock itself, and a whole new set of flanges and bolts. They give you a, a proper O-ring as well, it looks like. I got one of these that came with a square O-ring and it was tightened down there, brand new. That wouldn't make a seal. I had to go out and get one of these. Now I've, I've got one on hand by Honda, but this looks like a, a good match for it. So we're gonna use that. I believe this is supposed to go down inside there more. I don't think I'm getting it in there. And the, the angle of this looks bent. I can see it's bent. It's off to the side in the first place. In the hole. It's off to the side. That's weird, especially if it's got to line up perfectly with the fit here. There, there is going to be some play on here. You got this rubber bushing to hold it tight up inside, but gee, I'm not sure it can fit alongside there. I'd like to see what's on this factory one. I don't know if that'll come out of there. Okay, so if that's as far as I can get it down, I'm not getting it down there. I'm not getting it inside. Well, that's the same way, coming in from the side. But you can see that indeed it was down inside of there. You can see the way it wants to sit. So that's a real problem right there. Okay, so I'm having trouble with this and I'm going to just go take care of it. And I'll tell you about it later, but... Okay, Petcock. Well, I got a strainer to go in there all the way like it's supposed to be. But it wasn't easy. I had to shave down a little bit of the outside diameter 
and then shove it in, which I still couldn't get it in very well. But the final, the final way I got it in was with a smaller pair of channel locks, uh, gripping the edge of it here and the bottom side here and helping to push it all the way down inside of there like it's supposed to be. And that's not coming out now. And it, this one here doesn't look too bad. I had to use the used one off of this older petcock. All right, so hopefully that's good now. We can move on. We'll use the old hardware over that came with it, 1996. And I'm gonna use the O-ring that is supplied with the kit. I'm hoping that it's not a failed O-ring. It looks to be proper. One last thing is to get a cleaning here. Okay, ready to install. Got the O-ring on there. That O-ring looks like it's gonna squish down nicely. Okay, you're gonna check this out right along with me for the first time. We've got the new petcock in and it's already holding gas. So that's good. We've got the fuel line from that going to the carburetor set up here on the bench. I wanna statically test this to make sure it's not overflowing before I even go putting it on the bike again. So as well, we've got the overflow going down into a bucket here to see if we're getting anything. It's just a matter of uh, pulling this lever. Go ahead and put it on reserve. So far it's not dripping anything. I'm not putting that on if it's going to leak. It was leaking so bad. It's like, imagine the inside of a piece of pipe, the overflow size. It was coming out at full bore on that. That's pretty small pipe. Nothing coming out of that yet. I can't imagine why it was leaking so bad. I mean, it didn't look, really all I've done here is put a new tip in, new needle valve. I gotta put this carburetor back in here. Now all I gotta do is put the screws in on the air box, hold that down, and I think we're ready to put the tank on, and then we'll turn the gas on again and see if it's gonna leak. Uh, my test on it was good, but of course, when I went to unhook everything and I turned the carb on its side, then it overflowed. And that's what they do. They overflow when you turn them on their side. Okay. So, that's it for this. I gotta get those screws in, and then I'm gonna put the tank on and test it. It should be good to go. If it's not, then I'll start the cameras up again and complain a little more.
Well, that did it. It's holding gas now. Carburetor's back in, tank's on. I got my shipment of the second sprocket I've ordered. I'm trying to get a 51 tooth rear sprocket and they say on eBay that this fits. I notified the uh, seller not to even ship it if it had beveled holes and 8 millimeter size holes and they just shipped it anyway. And I had to wait for it to come from UK. Now you might say that I'm being nitpicky when it comes to uh, this whole scenario, but here's what it's about. The XR has a countersunk flathead and it's 10 millimeter. This is eight millimeter. So this doesn't fit. It's sickening. Okay, I was hoping that when I started it up, I'd be able to ride it as well. Anyway, uh, you know, I'm curious about the carburetor fix and the jetting. close you know maybe it needs a little a little more priming ah, it's just right there at this point you could try half choke Looks like a lot of cleaning agents are burning off the header. Hey, it runs good and steady and stuff. It doesn't have a rear sprocket on it. Or a chain. Okay, what a drag. We can't ride it.
Yeah, it's a great running motor there. Looks like this is going to be a good dirt bike. Ah, no headlight. Or tail light. We're not putting any power out to that stuff. Next time I take the seat off, I'll have to look into that. Oh, it runs good. So now the question of the jetting. When I had the carburetor apart, I put it back together with a 162. 